yeah, John, let's get on to the book. Um, it's just come out recently. It's Tornado in the Eye of the Storm. Tell us what the book is about for our viewers who may have not picked it up yet. It is the story. Well, as you said already, Mike, I told my story in Tornado Down 30 years ago about what I did. So this is the story of everybody else. I am a passing character in the book. But what I've done is I've gone back and interviewed all of my friends and colleagues who flew the first operations, interviewed the other prisoners of war who were shot down and ended up in captivity. And most importantly for me, interviewed the families, the loved ones who waited at home. So the wives, some of whom lost their husbands, the daughters, some of whom were woken up in the middle of the night to see your dad's missing in action, some of whom were woken up uh, at night to see your dad's missing and he's not coming home. Uh, and so it's the interwoven story of the tornado at war in 1991 and the families who fought their own war uh, back home. Yeah, I think that's very important to, um, you know, recognise the families because they don't get enough love and support sometimes from the public. I think we forget about it. And sometimes I think the people, we, the people at the front line forget about it as well. Because yeah. they are they are fighting a real battle. There's a couple of instances in the book where, you know, in the military, we call it the knock at the door. <laughs> Middle of the night, somebody's coming to your door and you know it's bad news. Yeah. There's one, and it was in training before the, the war started, and it was uh, OC-27 squad, Bill Green. Uh, he set out on a nighttime training mission uh, because he was deploying to the Gulf in a few days. Uh, and I spoke to his wife, Jenny. In fact, I've just got an email from her because she's just read the book. Um, uh, I spoke to his wife, Jenny, and she's in bed, uh, one o'clock in the morning. And she woke up. What the heck is that? Puts her dressing gown on, walks downstairs, and she, she, this is uh, RF, they're at RF Marm, he's OC 27 squad. She says she opens the spy mm -hmm. hole, looks out, and the RF Marm station commander, Jock Stirrup, who went on to be the chief of the defense staff actually, Jock Stirrup is outside in his full dress uniform with his hat on, and there's a padre with him. Mm. And Jenny said, Ed, if you are an aircrew wife, you know what that means. If the news. black car pulls up to your house, you know what that means. And she said she wouldn't let him in. <laughs> and it's tragic and sad and, and emotional. But she, in the one way, it's it's fun. It's just the, the, the emotion of it is surreal. And she said she wouldn't let him in. She sat back down on the step and she said, poor old Jock had to stand outside. Because if I didn't open the door, the news couldn't come into my house. Yeah. And she said eventually, clearly, she had to open the door. And he said, uh, Bill's missing, uh, mission over the North Sea. There's no hope whatsoever. Uh, and that's all they knew. They recovered bits of, little bits of the wreckage. There's some footage of them picking out, I think, a bit of the thin or something uh, in 1990. But his body was never recovered. He'd gone. That was it. Gone. And that in, in from so she said goodbye to him as he went to work. They had plans because he was deploying in I think three or four days. They were going off to see his parents in Northumberland actually, uh, do a little bit of walking on the beach, and then he was going off to war. And he went off to work, and that was it. No goodbyes other than I'll see you later, love. Nothing. And I interviewed Jenny at length about her experience and Bill's son Jeremy. Uh, who was a 17-year-old teenager then. And that was really emotional, talking to, to, to Jeremy about his father's death and how it affects, still affects them 30 years on. Yeah, it's I can imagine. Still, it still resonates. The, war, the Gulf War, the tornado at the Gulf War, the ramifications still resonate 30 years on. And that was quite, quite tough to do those interviews, actually. Yeah, you'd have to be delicate, wouldn't you? You can't just uh, storm in, so, yeah. No, I mean, you'd have to. And the other thing is they're trusting you with their story, and it's emotional, uh, and it's raw, uh, and they're trusting you not to, I don't know, sensationalise it, to, to over-egg the pudding, just to tell it as it was for them. Mm. And, to, uh, you know, touching word, the people who have read it who appear in the book who either lost loved ones or their loved ones were missing in action or they were part of the tornado force of all yeah i've had some really good messages to see a 
it's really fantastic, which is really gratifying. But it's fantastic not because I'm a brilliant writer. It's fantastic because the stories are so good. But most importantly, a couple of people are saying, John, I didn't know. I was there. I'm in the book. I'm one of the main people that runs through But I didn't know what everybody else was doing. Yeah. So yes. other people on my squad and other people on the other, I didn't know. Uh, and especially for um, a couple of the wives and a couple of the kids have said, do you know what? It's really captured what it was like for us. And that's really important to me. Yeah. Absolutely. So where did this idea stem from, John? Did you always have it in the back of your mind or was it a recent um, idea? No, I did not have it in the back of my mind at all. So, you know, I did the book about the Spitfire, yeah. uh, which told the story of the Spitfire. All, all my stories are the stories of the aircraft, but through the eyes of the people who were there. So if you want a book on the Spitfire's nuts and bolts and different marks, go to Hint Amazon. Manual. <laughs> and there's just Google Spitfire book, and I think 3,000 come up or something like that. So I'm not telling the story of the aircraft and its nuts and bolts. I'm telling the story of the aircraft through the eyes of the people who were involved with it. So I did Spitfire, then Lancaster, and my publisher said, John, these two books have both been bestsellers. We want, now want you to do something else. And a lot of people said, uh, loads of people were saying, right, you've got to do Hurricane. You've got to do Mosquito. And I kept, I've explained it a million times, especially on Twitter. When are you doing Mosquito? When you, I cannot do those books because the veterans aren't there. For, for Spitfire yes. and Lancaster, I interviewed 40 or 50 World War II veterans to get the stories. Mm -hmm. The veterans are not there from the Hurricane or the Mosquito. I can't do another World War II book because the veterans are not there in any numbers and they can't remember their stories in the detail that I need yes. to be able to write the type of book that I write. Absolutely. I could write a book on the hurricane, but that's not the book I write. No. I write a book about the people. Mm -hmm. And so it was, um, I, I write about this at the beginning of the book. It was five years ago, we were having the Gulf War, uh, prisoner of war reunion. Mm. Uh, we have one every year where the half dozen surviving uh, prisoners of war and the special forces guys get together uh, just to, we have one quiet beer, uh, and then we have 10 really, really loud beers. Um, <laughs> and uh, we were, we had, a, it was the 25th anniversary five years ago. And we had a big dinner in the RAF club where we invited all of our friends. So there's about 110 people in the RAF club wow. for dinner. Uh, we had the RAF band there. Sir John Major came as our guest of honor. The defense secretary came. And Sir John was talking about, it was really moving. He talked about his sense of responsibility of sending people to war. He said, because uh, he'd been out to Dohran where the tornadoes were mm -hmm. three days before the war, four days before the war started. He said, I knew something you didn't at that time. I knew I'd be sending you to war in four days. And he said, I looked into your eyes and I saw my 17, 18 year old son. And many of you were not much older. And yeah. he said, he talked about the sense of responsibility sending people knowing some would die. And he made a point at the dinner of kind of seeking out some of the wives, some of the, so the widows, the loved ones, and talking to them. And that was really moving. And it got me to thinking about yeah. the whole thing. And it also, we started to talk about it a bit more because we'd never really, everybody knew a bit about what everybody else had done. Oh, do you remember when the bomb exploded? Oh, do you remember when? The, but nobody had talked about it in detail. And people started 25 years on talking about it in detail and that's i thought that's a story that i mean i'm intrinsically involved in that story but i don't know what the story is <laughs> and it hasn't been done before so that's how the the the, the new tornado book came around